there seems to be a lot of confusion on what electronic hearing protection is and how it's different from noise cancelling headphones. People seem to think they're the same thing, so in this video I'm going to show how they work and what the differences are. So here we have three different types of headphones. This is electronic hearing protection, these are noise cancelling headphones, and these are just regular earmuffs. So let's take a look at what sound looks like to electronics. What I have here is an oscilloscope hooked up to a speaker. Now a speaker is just an electromagnet and a permanent magnet. When this moves, it generates voltage, as you can see on the oscilloscope. Now I'm going to use a tone generator on my phone and see what kind of sound wave we get on the oscilloscope when I put it near the speaker. Now I'll pause it. If we take a look at the oscilloscope, you can see it kind of looks like a sine wave. The amplitude is very small because the speaker was not amplified in any sort of way and it was just picking up the frequencies but you can see that it still resembles a sort of sine wave. So let's take a look at active noise cancelling and see what it is and what it looks like on a graph. So I've drawn these pictures. The sound comes in. It goes into a microphone. There is a processor on board which inverts the sound and then it reproduces it through the speakers. So why do we want to invert the sound? Now when you take two waves and you invert one of them you get destructive interference and what that means is that the original sound wave is cancelled out so if you look at this graph here is the input wave we see it starts with the peak then goes down but the output what this is going to play through the speakers is the exact opposite the wave is inverted it starts going down first and then goes up so what it effectively does is cancels out this wave. Now, if you'll notice, the amplitude is exactly the same. Both peaks are the same height. So here are the noise canceling headphones. Here's the on off switch, so they do take batteries. They do require power. Now inside each of the cups, it has a microphone that is listening to the ambient sound and it is inverting the wave so that by the time the wave travels through the cup from the outside and gets reached to your ear it has reproduced the exact same sound wave except inverted so that it effectively uses destructive interference and cancels out the sound take note that these cups are very thin and they have no sort of extrusion so when they're on they are not going to be blocking the sound themselves. So the cup itself does not block very much sound from getting to your ears. It is all done in the electronics. Moving on to electronic hearing protection, it's similar but still different. So the sound comes in, it goes into a microphone just as before, but instead of going to a sound inverter, it goes into a analyzer which turns down the volume essentially when it hears a loud sound it turns the volume to zero and it stops reproducing sound through the headphones so graphically what does this look like well there's gonna be two different options of what's gonna happen so there's either quiet sounds or there's gonna be loud sounds when there's quiet sounds you have your input Again, notice the amplitude is a quiet sound, it's, the amplitude is very low, and what you hear is a boosted version of this. They're exactly the same sound wave, except this is louder, and that's what you're going to hear through the headphones. So it's amplifying the low sounds, the quiet sounds, which is what you want. Now when you get to the louder sounds, as you can see, the peaks on this are much higher than before indicating louder sounds when that computer detects a loud sound it turns the volume to zero now you might be wondering if it turns it to zero what is this here and what that is is the response time so it takes a little bit of time usually like 10 or 15 milliseconds for the electronics to detect that there's a loud sound and to turn the volume to zero here's where the confusion comes in people think that because the response time is 10 or 15 milliseconds 
that they are being exposed to loud sounds during that amount of time. That is not true. If you look at the amplitude of this graph, you'll see it's very low. It's not as loud as the original sound. Again, if you'll notice, with the active noise canceling, the amplitude of the output had to be the same as the amplitude of the input. Well, with electronic hearing protection, that's not the case. Electronic hearing protection is often used for range time when you're going to be around loud sounds like gunshots. Now, if you'll notice, the active noise canceling has the same peaks, the same magnitude of the peak on the output as the input. Now, let's say your active hearing protection was active noise canceling and you heard a gunshot with it and you tried to make it cancel the gunshot. Now, what that would have to do is reproduce the same waveform as the gunshot and the same amplitude. So the tiny speakers in your headphones would have to reproduce the same loudness of sound, the same amount of decibels as a gunshot and a gunshot's around 140 to 180 decibels, which is very, very loud. Now, there's no way the little speakers in headphones are able to reproduce 140 to 180 decibels. That's just ridiculous. That's why they can't be active noise canceling. So if they're not noise canceling, how do they really work? What makes them different from regular earmuffs? So here are the active earmuffs. This happens to be the Peltor Sport 300, and these are just regular Winchester earmuffs. The way these work is both of them, actually. They use these cups here, they make a seal on your head, and the cups are what blocks the sound. Then, the difference is on the active ones, they have microphones that reproduce the quiet sounds into speakers on the inside, so you can hear people talking. All of the sound protection is done in the actual cup itself. These are no different when this has no power. When this is turned off, these are exactly the same. This blocks all of the sound, this blocks all of the sound. If you put these on, you'll notice that they sound like regular earmuffs. That's because they are. The electronics are not what protects your ears from damage. All the electronics do is boost the quiet sounds so you can hear it. You were never in any danger because the loud sound waves from the gunshot are not coming through. So how can I show this? Let's say here's one room and here's another room. In between is a soundproof wall. So no amount of sound, no matter how loud, will ever get through to this other side. Now what you've got here is some TNT and a microphone. Now that microphone has a wire that goes through and goes to your headphones. If this TNT goes off, it explodes and it's really loud on this side of the wall. Remember, this is soundproof, so you won't even hear it on this side. But this microphone's here. You're going to hear this explosion through the microphone and in these headphones. Will you have hearing damage? Even though this was really, really loud? No, you won't. Because all you're hearing of the actual noise is just being reproduced from a microphone to your headphones. There's no actual loud noise going through the headphones and into your head or into your ears. It's all through the electronics. So that's why you're not in any danger from hearing loud sounds with the response time. Even if the response time was infinite, even if it never actually muted anything, let's say there were no electronics in this, all it had was the microphones that played what it heard through these speakers, you would still never get any hearing damage because the sounds you're hearing are only as loud as the speakers can reproduce, which is not very loud. Not enough to damage your ears, not nearly the 140 to 180 decibels that a gunshot is. So you go to the range, you have some electronic hearing protection, you can still hear the gunshots. They're pretty loud still, even though you're wearing these. A lot of people often think that's because the electronics aren't working, they're amplifying the gunshots. That's not true. What you're hearing is the sound waves going through. Now, every pair of headphones has a noise rating. These happen to be 24 decibels, I'm not sure what these are, but let's say for the sake of argument they're exactly the same. Now these are just regular headphones, like I said before, and these are the active ones. If I wore both of these and they have both the same rating, you won't be able to tell the difference of which one's louder and which one's quieter. That's because they're not. They're exactly the same. They have the same sound rating, and that has nothing to do with the electronics inside. That is only the physical construction and the sound absorption from the cups themselves.
and the materials that they're made of. The reason people still complain that the electronic hearing protection isn't working is because the sound rating on active hearing protection is generally not that high. These happen to be 24 decibel rating. The Howard Light Impact Sports that are very popular, they have, I believe it's a 22 decibel rating. Now the lower the decibel rating, the less it, uh, the less sound it blocks. Like I said, the gunshots are around 140 decibels, which brings it down to only uh, 118 decibels with the Howard Lights. Like I said before, you're not in any sort of risk for hearing damage by wearing electronic hearing protection, no matter what the response time is, but sometimes they are still too loud because of the decibel rating. And that can only be so good. It has nothing to do with electronics. That's, again, it's all in the construction of the headphones themselves. These would have the same problem. What you can do is put a set of foam earplugs underneath and then turn up the volume. That way you can still hear people talking around you. Yet when you hear a loud sound, you'll have the foam earplugs in and you'll hear less of that loud sound. Ideally, you'll want to find and buy electronic hearing protection with the highest decibel rating you can find. Now these are, again, they're 24s. The Howard Lights are 22s, and the Howard Lights are pretty cheap, which is why they're so popular. But if you want the maximum protection while still being able to hear the people around you, you're going to want to buy a more expensive one. I know the this is the, uh, again, this is the Peltor Sport Tactical 300s. The Peltor Sport Tactical 500s have a 20, 26 decibel rating. Yeah, that's what it is. 26 decibels, and I'm sure they make even more expensive headsets that have even higher decibel ratings, which is ideal. And you can buy gel cups for a lot of the headphones, which will help seal it even better and increase that, that decibel rating so that you can have the maximum amount of hearing people around you while also maximizing how much uh, hearing protection you actually get. So in summary, active hearing protection is not the same thing as active noise canceling, and you are not at any risk by wearing active hearing protection. You are at no risk of hearing damage any more than you are for wearing regular headphones. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope I've cleared up some of this confusion on the differences between noise canceling headphones and electronic hearing protection and I hope I have successfully convinced you that there is no risk of hearing damage by wearing uh, electronic hearing protection versus regular headphones. If you like this video, please leave a like, comment, share, and subscribe. If you have any other suggestions for other electronic things that you have questions about, maybe I can explain them in a future video, so go ahead and drop a comment down there, tell me what you want to see, what kind of things you want explained, and I will do my best to make a video on those. Thanks everyone.